So hey, I will be showing you how to create stylized foliage in this style of, well, anime, I guess. With the use of Photoshop, Blender and of course Roblox Studio. But anyways, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. And the first thing we are going to need is going to be the texture. So I'm just going to go to the file and press on new. Now right here the resolution basically just depends on how detailed you want everything to be. But I'm just going to stick with the 512 resolution since it's going to be enough for what I'm making. And now I'm just going to make this layer, the background one, black black, like this. And that's because I want to make the leaf texture white, since it's going to allow me to change the color to whatever I want in Roblox Studio without having to modify the whole file itself. But now I'm just going to make a new layer with Ctrl Shift and N, and this one is going to be called the leaf texture. And now if it comes to making the leaf texture itself, there is basically a few ways how you can do it. One of them would be to just have a brush, and I'm just going to find the leaf one, and I think it was this one, where I'm just going to be able to basically just place it like this. And this could technically work, right? Except this is not exactly this time that I'm going for, so I'm just going to paint everything manually. And to save you all of the headache, I'm just going to speed up this part of the video, but the main thing you need to know is that leaves are going to go out from the center part, basically out words like this. And this is like the only thing that you have to focus on, well except the shape of the leaf of course, since you don't really want to make for example fries. But anyway. And now something like this is pretty much fine. If you wanted to, you could add more, or maybe fill out different gaps like for example here and there. But I'm just going to keep well this. And now while having the layer selected, same with the white color, I just want to grab the paint bucket tool from right here and just fill this in. Then I can just remove the selection. And this is going to be our leaf layer, where now there is still two things that we need to do. One of them would be to go to filters, then blur and then Gaussian blur, just to smooth out the edges. And now the radius of the blur is going to be dependent on the resolution of your image. For me a radius of 2 pixels is going to be too much, so I'm going to keep it around 1. And now the edges basically look like this. And now the other thing I want to do is to just hide the background, and now I can finally export this as a texture, by going into file then export, and then click export as PNG. So now we have our texture, and there is yet another thing that we need to do. And you can do this either now or later, but it's basically this pixel fix, which removes the black edges on the scaled images. And from this explanation and the visual example, you can see how it removes the black pixels around the edges. And this is kind of necessary, since I've used this for a few years now, and whenever I'm making a tree or whatever else, the leaf textures always have these black edges in Roblox Studio. But how you get it is basically just by pressing on this link, going to the download, and then getting whatever version is suited for your operating system. And after downloading it, you are just going to have the icon. And the only thing you need to do is drag the texture file onto the icon, and it's going to give a prompt with open with Node.js. And after you do it, you are going to have this console, which is going to say press any key to exit after it finished processing the image. But anyway, let's just jump into Blender right now. And here a pretty useful modifier that I use is going to be a this one right here called import export images as planes. What this one is going to allow me to do is to press on shift A and then add an image from which I just want to select the image as planes option. And from here I'm going to navigate to the texture that I exported from Photoshop. And it's going to create this plane right here, where right now I can just go to the material preview, and you can see that it already has the background transparency. If you just imported this as a texture or an object, you would have to do all of the different stuff in the material tab and change the blend mode, connect the different nodes and so on. But going back, for right now I'm just going to rotate the plane on the x-axis by 90 degrees. Then just go to the edit mode by pressing on tab, go to the face selection and just start duplicating the leaf by shift and D. Now this is going to follow my mouse, so what I want to do is just press on escape, so it's going to go back to the original position, and then I just want to press on R twice. So I'm going to be able to rotate the image around the central point, and I basically just want to repeat this process now. And once I have a few of these, I can select some of them and just change the size a little bit. Then I can select everything, and I can just duplicate and rotate. So now we are basically just starting to have this, well, bush. 
And again, I'm just going to keep repeating the process. But this time I'm also going to move them around. And right now I'm going to change the shading of this mesh by copying the alpha vertex data of another object. And I'm going to be talking more about this in studio, since I basically just done a little bit of trial and error with different meshes from right here, to basically see which shading is going to be the best. And I figured that it's the UV sphere, which I'm going to basically just add. And now to copy the data of this sphere into the leaves, I need to select the leaf mesh, and then just go to the modifiers. And the modifier that I want to add is called the data transfer where the source is going to be the sphere and the thing that we want to transfer is going to be the face corner data. So I'm just going to select this one, expand it and then select the custom normals. And here it's telling us to enable the auto smooth option, so let's just do it right now. And right here you can see how the shading basically just changed. And you could technically already leave it as this, since it's going to be better than the default option, but there is also another thing that we can do to make it a little bit better. And that's to, for example, if I just select the front view, then go to this drop down and select the face orientation and change to the solid mode, you can see how some of these faces are red. And this means that this is the back of the face. And what we want to do is basically just rotate all of the red ones to be pointing towards the camera. So again, I need to go to the object mode, then just select them and, well, rotate. And it's basically just going to look like this. And you can even keep rotating them to not show on the closer angle since it's going to affect the shading as well. But I feel like this should be enough. So I'm just going to disable the face orientation again and go back to the material preview. And right here you can basically see the different shading effect. And this is the shading effect that we basically want for the stylized assets. And also, basically depending on how you rotate the leaves, they might have different shading over different angles. So the best practice would be basically just experimenting and seeing what works. But anyways, now while having this well clamp, I'm just going to select it, then just go to File, select on Export, and then FBX. And right now I just want to select the selected objects, so I'm not going to export the sphere, and change the scale to 0.05. And then I'm just going to press on Export FBX. And for the final part, we can just hop into Roblox Studio, which is, well, updating again. So, well, in the meantime, I'm just going to say that this model that I'm making this tutorial is going to be available on my Patreon. And same with this tree right here, too. But anyways, so right here we have something that I'm going to be talking about later, but let's get to actually importing our leaves. And we do it by selecting the Import 3D option, where after we select the file, we are going to have the mesh and the texture. And I don't need to upload this into Roblox, so I'm just going to press on Import. And here are our leaves. So I'm just going to anchor them really quickly and disable the collision, but my next step is going to be adding a surface appearance under the mesh that we just uploaded. And this surface appearance is going to basically just allow us to make the texture transparent, because without it, it's just going to have these black areas. But let me just go back to the mesh. And here I want to just copy the ID of the texture and paste it under the color map of the surface appearance, as well as the roughness map. And the most important thing would be changing the alpha mode from overlay to transparent. And here are our leaves, but we can see them from only one side. So I'm just going to select the mesh and enable the double sided property. And now it should be fixed. But now you might also be thinking how do I change the color of the leaves. And it's as simple as going to the surface appearance and just changing the color property. Where this time I'm going to make it for example orange. And I think I might have done something wrong with the shading a little bit or maybe just the color, but it's giving a pretty neat effect so I'm going to actually see how this one works. If not, I'm going to go back into Blender at the end of the video. But anyway, and yet another thing that you might be asking is going to be how do I get a tree trunk? And well, this one is made with a Blender add-on called Sapling Tree Gen, for which I'm going to leave a link down in the description for a tutorial, since I don't want this video to be too long. But using it is pretty simple since you just select a tree and just press on few settings, or you can just get one from the toolbox too. But anyway, so now to just make a tree, I'm just going to copy this trunk, put it in the workspace, and just start positioning it. And again, I'm just going to speed up this process.
and I would say that this is actually looking good, even with a bit of a weird shading here and there. But this is the thing that I mentioned about the shading and why you should be using a sphere. Because this model right here, it used a sphere as the vertex data object and this one used a cube. And if I just pull them together, you can see that the shading is way different. And the same goes for this tree in comparison with this one. And also there is this object which didn't even have the shading done. But that's also going to be everything for today. So again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also thanks everyone for watching and hope you had a nice day and see you guys.